Hello and welcome, this is Nack at the Phoenix Fantasy Forge. Today we're going to be working on making a knife. It's my very first tutorial, I'm a little bit excited. I do thank you for checking this video out. I hope you enjoy. We're going to be working on this knife. Now this is just a relatively rough sketch. It's going to be a very simple knife. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of like a box opening knife. It's a utility type blade. It's fairly simple in design. I think it's going to be a nice, nice elegant touch on the handle though. And we're going to be working on that. Now I'm going to be working out of ATS 34 to make this knife and I want to walk you guys through the entire process of making a blade from start to finish, from bar stock to a finished product. The first step in making a knife is to make a blank. This is a blank. You can see that it looks very shiny. It's been buffed up. Ground, you can see that the bevel is on there. Here's another example. Same deal. These have been turned into an entire blank. Now, this steel has not been heat treated yet. So it's a blank, but it has not been heat treated. I'm gonna send these out to be heat treated. And they are ready to go as far as being a blank. Now they're not perfectly buffed. If you get real close, you can see that there may be some tiny scratches in here. That's not that big of a deal. During the heat treating process, the top layer of this is going to come off anyway. It just, I mean, just a tiny bit of the steel will be taken off. And then final sanding when it comes back anyway is what we're going to be doing to make those perfect and have a nice mirror finish. So making a blank though, uh, there's, there's steps that go into that process as well. And the very first one is to make a template. Templates are particularly important for people who intend to make their knife again. It's kind of hard to do things from memory, especially when it comes down to, uh, you know, even a slight difference can make that, make the knife a completely different shape. And I'll tell you, with as many shapes as for knives there are out there, people have jumped up some pretty cool ones. Having a template is a key. You can see we've got a template for this knife right here. I just make fairly simple templates. They're just paper backed with tape. It makes them a little bit more durable so you can trace it on the steel a couple times with the marker without messing up the, you know, the edges of, this, of the uh, template. There's the template for that one. So you now these, we're talking about blanks, but backtrack here a little bit. These are not blanks. And the reason you know is because it still has the mill finish on there. See this black finish on that one? And on this particular steel, it's more of a gray. But that has to be ground off before we're going to send this out to heat to be heat treated. And these are not these are not sanded. This one's not even finished really. I gotta finish this bevel right here. But uh, those are some good examples. And all I do, like I said, to make these templates is I just back it with a little bit of tape, make it a little bit more durable, and cut it out. Alright, so now we've got our template cut out and I've got it taped here on the steel. Notice that the steel is quite a bit bigger than the template itself. So we've got some waste, which is not too big of a deal, but I also kind of did it on purpose. I mean, I could fit this on a smaller piece of steel, but uh, I use a guide when I'm grinding these bevels and I'm actually going to leave this piece of steel here. You can see those little black lines right there. I'm going to leave that on there and that's going to help me run it through my guide. It's kind of a cheaty way to get things done, but Tell you what, man, it keeps those bevels super straight, and that way when I get to the hand sanding part, they're already straight, I don't need to try and straighten them out. It uh, makes it a little bit easier for me to get that done. Um, but the rest of this material does need to be removed before we start grinding this bevel. Okay, we're all set up here to do some uh, plasma cutting. Make sure you've got it grounded right on your work piece there. Make sure you're wearing goggles. Obviously, I'm not the safety expert here. If you're gonna go for get a tool like this, Read the safety instructions, is something I've never done. But uh, because I know you need these glasses, which are super dark and make the sky a nice dark green. What can I say? It's beautiful. But we're going to go ahead and cut this up. I like to sit on a stool because I hate having metal dripping on my shoes. And it does get some molten metal out there. That's what a little, this is just a little plasma cutter, but that's what they look like if you didn't know. And I've just got this clamped. Bit too far. There we go. We are set to go. Just a little bit more. There we go. with 
are stocked like this, you can save yourself a lot of time. It's an extremely effective way to cut through bar stock, what can I say? it right on there on your line because it does ruin the steel I mean it scorches the daylights out of it so you want to not scorch the part that you're actually going to make into a knife so run it just a little bit around it and then you can grind the rest of it off with your grinders a bit closer it's gonna save us I don't know eight sixteen dollars or so in sandpaper on the grinder okay now that we've got this uh, roughly cut out now we're gonna sand it down to the lines that we had drawn from our template so we want to really get it super close to the final shape if not right on but I am using rough sandpaper so you don't want to go past those lines at all it's a 40 grit and uh, that as anyone will tell you, it's going to be leave some pretty good scratches on there. You want to have to, you don't want to have to go beyond your marks with your fine paper. So we're going to get it super close, but not really past it. Be very careful. We'll get that blanked out here in just a second. trouble. I should be wearing my goggles. I'll go ahead and put them on. You know, you can see just fine with them. They're not that much of a nuisance. And they keep hot metal out of your eyes. So, uh, it's useful. Still relatively cool. I mean, it's okay for it to get hot at this point. It's going to be heat treated later anyway. But you don't want to scorch it. You, you don't want to for it to turn blue. That's the big thing. If, if it's getting heat blued, then you're starting to to uh, mess up some of those properties and burn out some of the carbon. So try not to get it too hot. I keep a bucket of water. There. Okay, welcome back. We've got uh, we've got this set up. It's a little guide. You can kind of see how this works. You slide the knife in there, and it will push it up against this, and it goes both ways. So that way we can grind a hollow grind bevel or a concave bevel onto this blade. And now notice what I did here. I put a little pin in because I don't want it to go past a certain point as I'm sliding it. 
because if it does then it starts to approach back towards the handle point and I gave myself a little wiggle room because the end grind is what you call that where it ends um, we want to grind by hand you can't really do it by machine it doesn't work very well or by with a guide like that so um, we're gonna go ahead and get started here Put my goggles on. And what you want to do, if you've got a setup like this, you want to do just a quarter turn on this every pass make sure you keep your blade relatively cool this will heat that steel up fast this can put more pressure against that than your than your hands can generally speaking so you want to keep your water bucket close by make sure you keep your steel relatively cool you never want to really overheat it during this uh, working process so back we go we'll just finish this up And that's that. We've got the initial grind uh, completed there. And so that looks pretty good. Now we're going to take this guide off and the rest of it we're going to do by hand. Okay, we've got that guide off now. And we're going to start doing this by hand. I'm going to leave this part on here for now. Uh, we'll just go ahead and finish this up. Uh, just so everyone knows, this is 120 grit paper that I use for doing bevels. I don't like to go more coarse than that. I find it's uh, it's difficult to get the scratches out later on. So I go ahead and start with 120. Yeah, it takes a little bit more work, a little bit more pushing, but it's not that big a deal. I think you get a better finished product because of it. So if we're going to go ahead and run this, and this is the part that just takes practice. So uh, if anybody's just barely getting started on using these, you know, these uh, grinding wheels, it just takes practice to be able to, to keep it straight on there. And, you know, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. I like to do mine up like this. Some people prefer to do it down like this. Uh, but uh, I find that I keep mine straighter if I go, if I can push it against it like that. And it tends to work good for me. So, well, we'll go ahead and get this one going. Make sure that this grind ends parallel to that baseline there. That's it's kind of difficult to do, but not really one, especially since I started with a guide, which made it very, very close to perfect there. So.
be afraid to just go a little bit at a time. You can see that it's starting to curve just a little bit, but there's a little bit right in the center where I need to take some out and just do it slowly. Try, you know, just take your time. The worst thing is when you is when you get in a hurry and you're trying to get it done, and then you end up taking up more material than you than you wanted in the first place. And uh, well, then it's time to go get yourself a new piece of steel. So that's starting to look a lot better. And remember, it doesn't have to look perfect when you're using coarse paper. This coarse paper takes off a lot of material, and you can see that there's some lines that maybe don't look quite right, and you think, oh man, boy, he sure screwed that steel up, but that's not the case. Because fine, the fine paper is when everything starts to, to uh, really you know, become a finished product. And so this is just, you gotta get close as you can. Don't get frustrated if, you're, uh, if it doesn't look the way that you think it's supposed to with your coarse paper. So I think that side's about ready to go on to the next grit, but we're gonna go ahead and work on this side with 120 and, and then we'll go up to 220. Okay, we've got this uh, 90 degree angle set up here once again, and I've got our line drawn on there to make sure that we're cutting off the right amount. You can see that's a heck of a lot of material. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that over to the chops. So I'm going to chop it off real quick, and then I'll bring it right back. And then we'll just finish it off with this. This is still the 40 grit I put back on there, and then we're going to do 120 all the way around to make it nice and smooth. Um, and then we'll get ready for some grinding on the sides. And that's, uh, we're getting pretty close to having this blank complete, so I'm going to go chop this off with the chop saw, and I'll be right back. Okay, you can probably even still hear the chop saw in the background slowing down. We got that cut. It's going to be a lot easier to grind that off now that we've got most of it gone. So let's get going there.
have it, the profile. I guess I'll wait for this machine to quiet down. Quit interrupting me, machine. Goodness gracious. But uh, there you go. You got the profile pretty much done there. And um, now we're going to take it over to our flat grinder, our flat sander, and uh, sand this side off and this side off and hopes that that will leave us a nice grind termination there. It looks like it should. They're pretty even. Look pretty sharp. So yeah, it's turning out pretty good. And then the next step after that is we're going to buff it up a little bit. Make sure that we've got most of our big scratches out. You can't send it off to be heat treated with a whole bunch of big scratches because it'll come back with big scratches. And once it's a lot harder after having been heat treated, it's going to be a lot more difficult for us to get those big scratches out. So a little bit of back and forth here between machines and I'll try and keep you guys uh, I'll, I'll try and let you watch as much of that as possible but some of it's just it gets a little tedious so switching machines here and there but I'm gonna go over to the uh, flat sander and we'll be right back okay we're just getting set up here for the uh, flat grinding got a brand new 220 220 is gonna be plenty to take off what we need to take off here so you don't need to get anything super coarse. Uh, but we've got our knife ready to go. We're going to sand all that mill finish off, all that black stuff. Once that's gone, get it ready for some buffing. One thing that we do need to do that I haven't mentioned yet, but we're going to we're going to grind the top part of this blade, the part that's not going to be handle material, if you will. We're gonna we're gonna sand that down fairly fine and buff that with the blade. Remember, we want that blade buffed up nice. Make sure that there's no big scratches in there. Right now, let's go ahead and take the sides off. And I'm having a little trouble because this blade is actually fairly short. So what I'm gonna do is grab a pair of um, vice grips to hold on to it for me. Got to cool it down in the water. It is hot. Gets hot very quickly. But you just take some vice grips like this. Oops, wrong way. And you can just clamp it right there on the end. And since it's going to be covered, the part that's going to be handle, you don't have to worry about quite as much. Scratch wise, it's okay if this digs in a little bit, it's no big deal. Because we're going to cover it up with a handle anyway. See, that's going to give me the leverage that I need to go ahead and grind this down, if you can see that. Make sure you can see. There you go. So kind of a, a simple little trick for a shorter blade. good to go. So now we're going to go buff this up and uh, see if we can't get, make sure that all those big scratches are out. Actually, I took one more thing. Again, what I was saying, we're going to, we're going to sand this top part first. The part of the blade on the top there, the spine is what you call that, but we're going to sand that down so that will get buffed with the blade. Okay, for sanding the top, I go ahead and use very fine sandpaper because I don't want to spend tons of time trying to buff any scratches out of the spine. So uh, it's set up here on just a really small sander. I just use a slack sander and what that does is it gives it a nice little curve across the spine. Not too much, but uh, just enough to, I think, give it a nice little effect. That looks good. That should buff up pretty nice. Okay, 
we're ready to do some buffing here on the buffing wheel. Uh, this particular machine uh, for buffing steel, I like to have one that, that rotates at uh, 3450 RPMs, 3450. You need a little bit faster for steel and then slower for wood, so about half that for wood. And that's that machine over there. But uh, um, we're going to be using black compound first. Black compound's relative, it's a fairly coarse compound. And I just put it on a, a tight sewn wheel. I find that that tends to work just fine. Another thing that you can use, let me grab this for you. Other wheels that people will use are these, uh, these hard cotton wheels. They've got a compound in them that stiffens them up. Um, and they're, they're pretty nice, but I think this just works better. It holds the compound much better, and the compound is what does the work anyway. Another thing that people like is these sisal wheels. You guys have seen that sisal rope. Um, and this is just made out of rope, and then it's got some cloth that's sewn around it. So there's a couple different options that you have, obviously, for buffing. And it's just whatever works for you. Um, but I always caution people. I have people come over and make knives on occasion, and I do some little classes and things. But uh, th to me, this is one of the most dangerous machines in the shop. Um, there's a story of a knife maker who got himself killed by not using a safe angle, and the knife got caught on the, uh, on the buffing wheel. And as fast as it's going, you know, it can generate a lot of speed in it. The knife went right through his stomach and he bled to death on his shop floor. So be careful. Okay, use safe angles. You read a little bit about uh, buffing. You want to use those safe angles. And uh, if you don't, you can, you know, get yourself hurt real fast. But we're going to start with the black compound here on this wheel. And then I've got another wheel that's not sewn quite as tightly. And we'll use green compound. Got some green compound as well. It's a little bit uh, less coarse. And that's all we'll need to do before this knife gets sent out for heat treating. But uh, we'll go ahead and buff that up. And right away I can see that there's some scratches in here that I'm going to need to go back and sand out. Um, maybe even sand out by hand, but I can probably put this on the on the grinder and do that. But we'll check the other side. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to go ahead and buff this roughly here for a little bit. Find the spots that for sure need to be uh, re-sanded, make sure that those big scratches are gone. And um, I'll go ahead and buff it a little bit more and then we'll resume the video um, right before it's going to be sent out for heat treatment.